Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Instagram. However, you're checking us out. Um, it's Marcus here from Aroma Time. It is uh, about quarter to nine in the morning here. Uh, I'm going to do a little quick Facebook Live on the best way to store greens. A lot of people are stocking up on food right now. Um, you're seeing shortages, um, or you're seeing empty shelves in stores. So people are stocking up. We've sold so many pounds and pounds of beans and frozen fish and all kinds of things that people are, are stock, stocking up on just in case. Now, um, I wanna talk about greens, how to store greens so you get the longest shelf life. A lot of people who are coming here to buying our groceries um, are asking us, you know, I want to stock up on things. I want to, I want to take three, four pounds of spinach. I want to take, you know, lots of you know, several packages of romaine. How do I store these the longest? Because I don't want to go back out to the grocery store in a couple days for more vegetables. So I'm going to answer that question uh, now. And good morning to everybody who's tuning in. Good morning, Mark. How's it going? Um, and everybody else is tuning in. Just do me a favor and drop a comment. Hashtag live if you're watching live or hashtag replay on the replay. Um, good morning, Lisa. Lisa just joined. There's lots of people on, but I can only see a couple people that are on right now. So I'm going to talk to this morning about how to get the longest shelf life out of your greens, out of your green leafy vegetables, like spinach, arugula, um, sal other salad greens. These are, I'm going to tell you a tip that I learned many, many, many years ago as a young apprentice when I worked at the Greenbrier in West Virginia. I had the pleasure of meeting Shirley Carrere and Harold McGee. They are both authors uh, and their specialty is food science. Food science. And Harold McGee has a great book. It's called like On, In the Lore of the Kitchen or something. Let's take a quick look here. I have, ha I have his book. I have both their books. Um, and I actually did guest chef um, dinners with them when they were at the Greenbrier. McGee, um, let's see what comes up here. On food and cooking, on food and cooking, um, the science and food of cooking. Um, him and Shirley Carrer both wrote books on this and um, I was able to, um, to work with both of them when they came to the Greenbrier. This was the early 90s. Greenbrier's a resort in West Virginia. Um, by the way, how many of you right now are planning vacations? Speaking of, of the Greenbrier and resorts, how many of you right now are like, okay, when this is all over, I'm going to here. I'm going there. Because I know Jamie and I are saying that. We're like, when this is all over, we just need some, we just need a, a few days um, on a beach, in a cabin, somewhere where there's no outside distractions. And Jamie and I are not like that. When Jamie and I go on vacation, it's typically go, 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 work, 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 go, 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 go. You know, we, um, we, um, go, uh, when we go, when we go away, um, we have, you know, we get to relax, but it's a lot of, it's still business. Like when we do our wine vacations and when we travel to our, our, our business conferences and everything, we always sneak away, but we're always going to a vineyard or somewhere, a distillery, a farm, um, something that's sort of business related. So we're like now like, okay, after this is over, where in the world are we going that, we're just not doing anything. Our phones are off and this and that. If anybody, um, if anybody's in that same situation, just drop a comment of where you're actually want to go or thinking of going. So, um, Tina goes, you need to rest. Yes. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Judy. Um, Christina, good morning. Hello, Kat. Um, going before, Mark says, going before it's over. Uh, that's a good idea to get away. Uh, good morning, Judy. Hi, Bonnie. Um, Sean, uh, Nancy. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna do a quick little thing. I got a phone call at nine o'clock on a coaching call. Um, how to store greens the best? Your green leafy vegetables the best. So here's what actually a lot. This is this is a misconception. People think that when you put salad dressing on greens. That the, that the vinegar in your salad dressing is breaking down your greens because of the acid, high acid content. That's actually not true. What's breaking down the greens the quickest, vinegar, the vinegar does, the liquid does, but what breaks the greens down the quickest is the oil because the oil coats the greens and suffocates the greens and they wilt. So greens are alive and living. When you, when you buy spinach, when you buy arugula, when you buy heads of lettuce, this stuff is still living and alive, right? It's, it's still breathing. So 
when you put salad dressing on greens, it's the oil that coats the greens where the pores, the cells can't get any more oxygen and it kills it and it dies and it wilts. So the vinegar as well will do it, but the oil's doing it much, much, much quicker. So that's why you always want, if you're not gonna make your salad, eat your salad right away, don't dress it, keep the dressing on the side. Now, when you're storing your greens in the refrigerator, you wanna make sure that they're 100% dry. And you will get an amazing shelf life if they're 100% dry and, and something that's sealed tightly, believe it or not, something that's sealed tightly. Um, we've done these experiments, we did these experiments actually at the Greenbrier when Harold McGee came there and Shirley came there. We actually did these experiments with greens. This is why a salad spinner, folks, is an essential. Salads, a salad spinner, that's that thing where you twist and it spins it like a, like a dryer and it blows out, it, it pulls out all the water, it's a centrifuge. These are super essential if you're washing greens and then putting them into your refrigerator because draining greens on a colander still keeps things there. You want to get the salad spinner and spin it really, really dry. Ziploc bags work, by the way. You can put dry, uh, uh, totally dry. If you have any moisture on the green at all, any moisture on the green, that water molecule or vinegar or whatever it is is on there will actually start suffocating the green. So the green can't do its natural thing. So if you're buying spinach and let's say that it, let's say you just pick spinach from your garden, you're buying bunches of spinach that has dirt on it. If you wanna make it last longer, don't wash it right away, wash it as you're going to eat it. So, um, Gil's saying you can also revive with ice water. You can revive with ice water too. Ice water does revive things. Um, I did an experiment with kale yesterday, I'm reviving a, a bunch of kale, and uh, yeah, ice water does. In fact, a lot of vegetables are shipped on ice. Um, broccoli shipped on ice, kale is shipped on ice, or certain greens, certain vegetables that are shipped, they, they come in and they'll re it. There's more ice in the boxes than the actual greens itself. Uh, but ice water revives. Um, even asparagus, you can take asparagus, uh, cut off uh, the bottom and stick them in, not ice water, but like room temperature water, and that kind of revives them as well. So back to the greens. Make sure your greens are totally dry. Do not put greens away that are have any moisture content on them. So for example, if you get greens and it's a hot day and you have them in a box or a bag and they're in your car and you're transporting them and all of a sudden it came from the cooler, from somebody's cooler to a place where it's, it's in the sun or warm temperature and it starts perspiring inside, just like how you take a glass of ice water and stick it on the table and all of a sudden it starts perspiring, your, your vegetables will do that too if they go from the cooler to room temperature back to the cooler. And when they hit the room temperature, they're gonna start perspiring. A lot of people will put it away and you have all this moisture content on your vegetables. That's the worst thing to have happen. Um, when we get deliveries, we have to make sure that they go right from the refrigerated truck right into our walk-in cooler. If we let them sit around, the shelf life on those would diminish drastically because everything is um, um, everything has water molecules on it. Also, when we cook vegetables at night, we take them from the cooler and we keep them out on our line ready to, ready to get cooked. If we keep a lid on like our broccoli and, and certain vegetables, all the vegetables, if we keep a lid on it and it sits at room temperature in the summertime, in the kitchen temperature for more than 10 minutes, it's already uh, condensating inside. The water buildup is always there. And if you keep that lid on, those vegetables will not make it that, that long. Those vegetables are totally garbage. Um, so I have to keep on my staff about making sure the lids are off, things are breathing, um, and condensation's not happening. So condensation from moving temperatures of your vegetables, especially your greens, will kill them. So at that point, you wanna, if that, if that happens, if you're bringing vegetables home and that happens, at that point, you wanna go through the washing process, the spinning process, lay them out, um, in the in the in the refrigerator on a tray paper make sure they're dry and then put them in something that is totally airtight and believe it or not you will get 30 days on greens if they're properly stored 30 days and that's in the book that's in Harold McGee's book and Shirley's book I think it's in both their books and they get the maximum shelf life both those books are really good um, I really enjoy reading Harold McGee's book. I've had that one um, the longest and read it several times. And there's all kinds of cool tricks that you will learn in the kitchen. So for example, like if you cook and you have glass, if you wear glasses and you're constantly cleaning the inside of your glasses, you're actually charging them to create the attraction of molecule, of, of particles going in there. You're actually like, like so if you took a, a balloon, put it on your head and then stuck it onto the, onto the wall, that balloon is charged, right? So people that are cl always cleaning the inside of their glasses are always charging the glasses to attract the, the, the molecules 
um, to particles to actually go in. So this is why the outside of your glasses are not getting dirty and the inside of your glasses are because you're always charging them and wiping them. So um, cilantro is hard to keep. Yes, cilantro is hard to keep. Cilantro is a tough one to keep. Um, keeping it dry, super, super dry and airtight will help that. Certain herbs when you put in the refrigerator, folks, like basil, basil should be kept out at room temperature. But if you're putting basil in the refrigerator, you actually need to wrap it, put it in a container. Um, if you have it in like a Ziploc baggie, airtight Ziploc baggie, then I would wrap it again with a kitchen towel or put it into some kind of a bucket because that it needs an insulation factor. Basil gets too cold in the refrigerator and it's very volatile, it'll get bruised, it'll ruin it by being too cold. The ideal temperature for basil is, I mean, room temperature. Um, but it, it's still, you still have a short shelf life. You can't keep basil at room temperature for the whole week. But for us in the kitchen, we need to keep basil. Sometimes, you know, we get basil twice a week, three times a week. We can get it every day if we need it. So we actually keep it in the refrigerator, in a bag, airtight, and then in some kind of other container that it's not getting the direct wind on it from the ventilation or, or the fan in the refrigerator because that'll kill it. And by positioning certain things in coolers too, this is another thing. Um, I don't know who goes through this. Um, Harold McGear, one of them. They also go through this again, like where to put certain things. Like you want to put your berries on the top shelf because that's typically where your fan is and circulating in the top of the refrigerator. And that's where you're going to get the cold first. And berries need to be kept the coldest. When you're storing, a lot of people make this mistake, when they store mushrooms, I'm sorry, uh, potatoes and onions at room temperature, potatoes and onions should not stay together. They will age, they, the, the gases they give off will, will have premature aging and you'll get much shorter shelf life. So potatoes and onions, you keep them at room temperature, keep them across the room in your kitchen. Do not keep them in the same cabinet where you open up and they're sitting there. A lot of people are trained to do that. Oh, onions and potatoes, and they can, they can go in the same closet, they can go in the same area. Keep them far away from each other. Um, so that is super important as well. So I will talk more about more of this kind of stuff about storing food um, and some more Facebook Lives. It's almost nine o'clock and I have to prep for my uh, coaching call that I have here in a few minutes. So, um, oh, hello, hello, hello from Belgium. How's it going there? Uh, thanks for the email, uh, Dominique. I really appreciate the email the other day. Um, how's everything going there in Belgium? Uh, and by the way, folks, Drop a comment um, if you're tuning in, wherever you're tuning in from. I see a lot of people from Ellenville. Uh, Cheryl's from Pine Bush. Um, Judy, are you up here? Are you in the city right now? Um, a lot of local people. Christina, I know, is in Florida. Um, so yeah, just drop a comment where you're tuning in from. Um, so uh, that would be fantastic. And just, uh, whoever has an amazing day. Jamie will be on live later at four o'clock. We have lots of, lots and lots of Orders coming again today. Bread just got here. Oh, bread just got here. All the organic bread alone bread just got here. Jamie's opening up the bags right now. Um, fresh baguettes. I'm gonna bring one over, Jay, and I'm gonna show them what we got. Uh, these go very quickly. Would you get 18 of these? 24, so. a lot. You got a lot of these. There's three, four big boxes, four big boxes of bread. Bread alone just walked in the door, and wow, does it smell great. Um, bread alone, organic bread from um, Lake Katrine. Um, this is like an iconic bakery, by the way. The first time I got their book was in the mid '90s. Um, Dan Leader, uh, the Bread Alone uh, book, he has been uh, revolutionizing bread here, making amazing bread uh, since I don't know when, early '90s, late '80s. I'm not sure when, but I have the cookbook. It's from the mid '90s. Um, organic, they're organic, which means when you see organic bread, organic bread, organic flour is all non-bromiated. You want to avoid bromide. Bromide is not a thing you want to be putting into your body. This is why a lot of countries have banned bromide, except for the US. It's a dough conditioner. It makes things last longer, chewier, stickier, uh, you know, consistency. You want to ditch the bromide. Bromide is not something you should be consuming. A lot of our bread products are bromiated unless they're certified organic. Certified organic bread products, flours, are not allowed to be under organic certifications. They're not really gonna list it as an ingredient in your bread, so don't be like, oh wow, it doesn't say it. It's just in the flour, folks. They, bro they, 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 they use bromiated flour. It's just one of, one of those things that they use. It helps with the bread. Um, it's getting um, 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 just softer, chewier, uh, lasts longer, things like that, it's a dough conditioner. So bread alone bread does, have, does not have any of that kind of stuff. We banned bromides here 
um, a few years ago. Um, we've always used bread walls. We've never really had bromides. Um, um, we really never had brom bromated flour products. We always use organic. But now, like, if I have to buy something, I'm really, really, really strict. Like, okay, it's um, Oktoberfest and we're getting pretzels. Like, I'll call the pretzel maker and I'll call and be like, I need to really make sure that there's no bromide. And the pretzels we were buying were actually made in Germany. And, of course, it's a European country. They don't allow those kind of things there. So um, they're like, no, here's our ingredients. Here's this, here's that. And, and no, we are, we are. So... Linda wants to know if we have rye bread. We do not have rye bread. Um, we have their sourdough whole wheat niche bread is what we have. We don't have their rye bread. If we brought it in, we would probably sell it. We the, All this bread will be gone by today, tomorrow, the, 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 the latest. Um, and we've now quadrupled our order. So um, Tuesdays, our bread, our bread, Tuesdays and Fridays, bread comes in. By the way, tune to Tuesday tonight. Folks, you've been buying tons and tons of seafood from us. We've probably sold that. I would have to, if I tallied up all the seafood, we've probably sold eight or nine hundred pounds of salmon, tuna, halibut, sablefish, shrimp, calamari, scallops. I mean, we're on about a thousand pounds. Um, salmon alone is five, six hundred pounds easily of salmon alone. It is insane how much you're buying from us. I have more coming in. I have some some in here now, but I have more coming in on Thursday this week. And tonight's Tuna Tuesday. Uh, because you've been buying so much from us, I have a limited supply of tuna tonight. I literally maybe have 25 orders of tuna tonight, maybe 30 orders of tuna, which that's going to sell out in no time. It's Tuna Tuesday, which means 19.99 tuna entrees. The safest tuna on the market, the lowest mercury content of any tuna out there. They're small albacore, line caught, one hook, one line tuna from the Pacific Northwest. Um, they are... Um, sashimi grade, it's amazing quality. It's a tuna we've all been using here for years. This is the real deal, the best quality tuna you can buy um, uh, that, that's out there. It's probably one, of the, probably one of the, I'm still, I'm still going. Okay, somebody just said. Somebody said the broadcast went down, huh? If, um, just got a text message from one of our, the broadcast went down. If, if you're still watching, just, um, just make a comment. Let me know if you're still there. So, yep, they're still watching, Jay. So we're still watching. Okay. Um, so the tuna, um, six four seven three thousand. It's tuna Tuesday. It's also Jamaican jerk chicken. That's our nine ninety nine special tonight. Jamaican jerk chicken. Our full grocery list is on our website six four seven uh, com. You can click that. Quantities and prices do change here and there. Um, like right now, we're very low on strawberries. I'm waiting for another order to come in today. Um, low on strawberries, we have plenty of kale, mushrooms are getting low, um, uh, mushrooms are getting low, uh, we have 40 pounds of local Bulick Farms mushrooms coming in tomorrow again, uh, ch local cheeses are getting low, Chase Home Farms has a two week shortage on cheese, I was able to get everything they had on the farm hub this week, but then there's going to be another a full week or so gap from Chase Home Farms Camembert and their Moonlight. So if you like that, stock up on that. We have more of that coming in, and um, they, they just, they're, on a, they're on a two week gap right now. Uh, a lot of places are, are finding that out. We have a lot more eggs coming in, a lot more local eggs coming in, and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so, all right, folks, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you later. Stay tuned for Jamie's Happy Hour Live today at four-ish. Uh, we get very busy in the afternoons. The phones, both phones ring off the hook for a couple hours at least here. So sometimes we get a little inundated with that. And I'm going to get on my phone call and get out for a run and uh, get to work. And i got to go uh, cook some tuna in the kitchen here in a few. All right, talk to everybody later.